Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you what sort of spider mite damage typically looks like on cactus plants. And there's quite a few different types of these spider mites going around. Um, the most common one used to be years ago, the, the, the traditional red spider mite that used to form little very, very, very fine webbing over over your cactus plants and now there's a lot of these what they call the fake spider mites that do the same type of damage they are mites but they don't have the little webbing so they're not easier to spot as the old traditional type of red spider mite used to be and sadly you don't get to see the damage usually until it's until it's done as in this case here now this is my slumbergia apuntioides and it is a really unusual type of cactus because you may or may not believe it, but it is actually related to the Slumbergia family. Um, the Slumbergia family are commonly known as the Christmas and the Thanksgiving or the holiday cactus. You usually see them around, around the Christmas holiday period and uh, the Thanksgiving sort of holiday period with beautiful flowers on them. More commonly known as, I say, Christmas cactus, um, but although it's more mostly the Thanksgiving cactus that are for sale these days, um, the differences in their flowers and the time of year they, they actually flower and also the Christmas cactus has more, the true Christmas cactus has more scallop leaves and the Thanksgiving one has more of a sort of crab claw appearance of the leaves but they're all sort of put under the same category but slumbergera is the genus of these plants now this particular slumbergera apuntioides is quite a rare one to find in cultivation and it does resemble much more like a traditional apuncture and if you want to know what what is an apuncture it's probably more commonly known for sailing garden centers as the um as the prickly pear cactus um, has the large pads on it, usually very spiny or sometimes not that spiny, but they always have glow kids. You just brush on them and they come off you like, oh, stick to you like glue. But um, they are they are nicknamed the prickly pear. This is not related. This particular cactus is not related in any form to the prickly pear, a puncture group. But because it resembles an apuncher in its appearance by its pads, it's nicknamed the sort of like the apuncher slumberger. But it isn't it isn't an, an apuncher in any form. It's 100 percent slumberger. But the apuntioids is named after its resemblance to the prickly pear. And it is a very difficult type of um, slumberger to grow in cultivation. This one is one I got as a cut. It was actually doing very, very well. It formed, um, as you can see, two lovely pads. Um, or there was lovely. And it was doing very well over here in the summer. I have this here in my grow room in a south-facing window. But I normally keep it, keep it here so it's not in such strong direct sun. Because slumberger do prefer a bit more shade than the desert type of cacti do. And I have these here with some of my Seleni cereus. These are my Pino cereuses that, that just get plenty of sun, but a little bit less sun than perhaps the desert cacti would like. So um, it's doing very well. But I noticed literally this morning I've got up and this has literally appeared sort of over the past couple of days. I noticed it yesterday forming a little bit yellow at the top and I just thought maybe it needs a bit of fertiliser. I never thought nothing of it. I do feed my, my plants regularly anyway. Um, this particular cactus is one that doesn't like to be kept bone dry over the winter period because it's a slumbergera and um, do like to have a little bit of water over the autumn fall um, and into the winter too. But like all cacti, they like to dry out in between watering, so it's not down to over watering. And I'm very familiar with red spider mite or spider mite, whatever it's, whatever you like to call it, over the years on plants. And I have been using two very good remedies that I find is very good as a prevention and also as a treatment. Um, one is SB Invigorator and the other one is neem oil, horticultural neem oil. And of course I use that abundantly, as you can see it's our polytunnel out there. In the polytunnel, I have to say, I've been very, very happy with both of them products. It seems to keep the majority of um, spider mite and mealybug at bay. It's impossible to never have bugs in your collection. People often say to me, Lynn, how can I get rid of bugs completely? You're not going to because plants are plants and they're going to attract all types of insects, good and bad. So I always say, look, you can't get rid of them for good. You just have to keep them under control. And I find both Espy Invigorator and Neem Oil 
both very good for keeping under control. But of course, this is my grow. This is my office actually, in um, a bit of a grow room as well. I have a, a table here in the window. I have so a lot of plants. This is going to be packed out in the next few weeks when I bring some plants in from the polytunnel to overwinter. In here, so there's going to be a lot more plants. But this is where it is sort of more or less now. And I do, obviously I do treat them with the SP Invigorate every now and then, but I haven't been keeping on top of it all the neem oil in, in here because these plants are pretty much bug free, never ever have any problems with them. So I just don't really get around to doing it as much as a polytunnel. We sort of do it as a weekly, two weekly thing in there as a treatment. But of course I've noticed this. So I'm going to be treating this with um, neem oil and um, I've got, I also use SB Invigorator, but I think I'm going to give this a neem oil spray and then probably next week give it a good blast with the SB Invigorator, which is also a growth stimulator too. Maybe not good to use maybe growth stimulators in the winter when you're trying to overwinter cacti, but with this particular type of uh, cactus, as I say, Slumagira, it's not, not a problem because it's going to be sort of actively growing throughout the winter anyway. But if you want to know how I do treat and deal with, with insect pests, do check out two videos I've made. The first one is on SB Invigorator, links up above. Um, the SB Invigorator was one that was recommended to me by other growers here and also some of the YouTubers and I'm very happy with it. Still new to using it, I've only been using it over the past few months, but very happy with the results. Seem to have hardly any pest problems now. Um, very good with that. So do link a uh, link above to that video on how I, how I make it up and a little bit about the product if you're not familiar yourself. And also neem oil, horticultural neem oil. I do like to um, water the plants uh, with neem oil. Um, so it has a bit of a systemic type of effect and it also helps to keep root billy bugs and other bugs away. I use that in the polyton a lot. Probably won't be now over the winter because I'm going to be keeping them all dry and cool. But um, that is very effective over, over, the, over the summer period, I should say. So links up above to the video on how to use neem oil as a pest preventative and treatment on cacti and other houseplants. Links up above. So obviously what I'm going to be doing with this, well, I don't think this plant's going to die. It's going to recover. It looks a bit unsightly at the top, a little bit orange and the, the typical type of corkiness. But it, it will recover. These two pads may drop off and new shoots will come from here. So only time will tell. But I'm going to give this a bit of a neem oil neem oil treatment and I'll repeat it probably next week with um, an SB invigorator and then therefore every week after probably for the next next few weeks just to keep on top of it and um, the good thing is with SB invigorator and also neem oil it's not a harmful chemical to use in fact it's a very natural product because if you're using a lot of other type of chemicals systemics and that and you keep having to keep spraying the plants it not only kills the the bugs it can sometimes it, it not necessarily kill your plants but it can weaken them so i don't like to use it unless an absolute last resort if nothing else, else works then i have to resort to systemics but so far so good with the neem oil and the um, sp invigorator so this is just a little video to show you if you're not familiar with spider mite what it looks like and as i say there's different types of mites so some will have the little web in and some don't necessarily have the web in. it just looks like this and I just hope this video can be helpful for you and also linking up them to treatment um, videos I like to use on the plants. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to know a little bit more on how to grow cacti and succulents, do please check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com and hover your mouse over the growing tips bar. There's a little drop down bar there, lots of different sections on how you can care for cacti and succulents. So I want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye. Bye, please save me. I'm